I'm about to demonstrate Code 400, an SAA 80 cycle product that is a cooperative development environment. I'm currently running on a PS2 running OS2 1.3 extended edition connected to an AS400. First part of Code 400 I'll be demonstrating is the edit compile portion. What this allows me to do is to load the source from the AS400 into an edit session and then take advantage of some of the features of OS2 and Presentation Manager. For example, the first thing you notice after the source is loaded is colors of the source. This is called token highlighting. Different fields of the RPG specifications are given different colors and fonts. This shows that the editor is sensitive to the language that we're working with. Other features in the editor are, for example, the format line. This is a ruler that appears at the top of the screen that shows, as I cursor through, what field I'm on. Also, the tab positions of the line are sensitive to the RPG specification I'm in as well. This means that as I move from a C-spec to an F-spec, the tab positions are reset. Another feature that we've built in is prompting. If I position myself to an RPG specification and press the prompt key, similar to SEU, it will split up the fields into the different input fields, allowing me to move directly to the field that I want to work with. We've also built in context-sensitive help. This allows me to press F1 for help in a particular field, and it will give me help for it. Any words that are highlighted in the help text are hypertext links, which allows me to click on it and position me to more help for that particular field. Once I find the op code that I'm interested in, I can double click on it and it will show me an example of how I would type it in. Also built into the editor are the ability to work with multiple views. Because we're taking advantage of OS2 and Presentation Manager, this allows me to edit the same source member, but in two different edit sessions. For example, uh, as I type in text on the bottom one, the top one will reflect the same changes. This allows me to work with both the top and the bottom of a source member at the same time, cutting and pasting between them. Additionally, as I make changes to my source, I have live syntax checking. For example, if I make a change to a line and move off it, the editor will automatically syntax check. It's very similar to what was on the AS400. The difference is that if I click on the error, it will show me where in the source the error originated. As I make a change to the line to fix the error, a little check mark appears beside the error message, indicating that I've made a change to the line and the error may be fixed. As soon as I move off the line, syntax checking verifies that the line is now correct. The next step in working with uh, Code 400 is verification. This is new because what it allows me to do is basically the front end of the RPG compile on the PS2, uh, therefore offloading the host. As I select to verify, it will retrieve any information required from the AS400, for example, DDS for the specifications, the F specs. As you'll note, several errors were found. I can go through the errors now by double clicking on them. It'll position me to the place in the source where the error occurred. If I want help in the error, again, press F1. It will give me help for that particular error. In this case, I'm just going to remove these lines. So I've now corrected the two errors that were in the source file I was currently working with. But you'll notice that there was an error that was in a file that was copied in as part of the compile. When I double click on it, it will ask me if I want to open it. I'm going to say yes. What it will do now is it will automatically upload it from the S400 into an edit session and position me to the place where the error occurred. This is significantly better than working on the S400 natively because it used to be I'd have to compile, find the listing, and figure out which files were in error. Here, Code 400 is automatically taking me to that position. Now when I want to do the verification again, The idea is that when I'm finished with the verify process, I should end up having to do one compile on the host to generate the actual executable program. To compile on the host, again, I select Go, Compile. I will be presented with a dialog which will allow me to set the options for the RPG compiler. If I wish to change, for example, listing options, I go up and I ch click on the boxes that I want the particular features that I want, and you'll notice that the corresponding option appears as it would on the Create RPG Program command. Once I'm finished selecting the options, I can say OK, and the compile will be submitted to the S400 either interactively or in batch. 
and any errors that may have occurred will automatically be shadowed back to the PS2 and presented in the same error window. The next portion of Code 400 is the interactive debugger. I've already compiled the program that we're going to debug and loaded it, so I'm just going to bring this up. Because it's a source level debugger, it allows me to work with the program looking at the actual source. For example, data breakpoint, I move to the line I want to stop at, double click, it adds a breakpoint. If I want to remove the breakpoint, double click again, it's gone. Much easier than the existing adding of breakpoints in the S400. To display a variable, I pointed the variable. The debugger is sensitive to the language we're working with, so it knows the start and stop of columns. And when I double click, it will automatically display the contents of that variable for me. If I want to change the contents of the variable, type over what I want in the variable, press enter. The variable is now updated on the S400. And I have the option of watching the variable as my program runs. So I'm going to transfer this variable to what's called a global monitor list. This is a list of variables that I want to watch as my program steps. I'm now going to step my program, so I press the step button. Because the application is actually running on the S400, I'm going to go to the S400 now and uh, press enter on the, a screen. The program is looking for input. Press enter. And now you'll notice that I've stepped to the next statement in the program. This statement is going to move blanks into results, so as I step, if you watch the global monitor list, you'll notice that it shows me the current contents of it now that it's blank. A couple of other features that are built into this are more extensive breakpoint support. Code 400 allows me to add special types of breakpoints. For example, I can add breakpoints on every call. So by adding a global call breakpoint, this will stop every time an internal or an external call is made. I can also add any number of commands on that breakpoint. For example, system 400, OS 400 commands or other debug commands that will be executed whenever the breakpoint is hit. The idea of these special types of breakpoints is it means I can stop in places in my program without having to go through and identify all of these points. So now when I say go, the program will, as you notice, has stopped on a call to an internal subroutine. When I'm sitting on a call to a subroutine, I can either step into it, which means I'll follow the code in it, or step over. In this case, I'm going to step over. The end result is that the code in the subroutine is executed, but it shows me where it comes back to. I might want to use this if I know that the subroutine is correct. I can now step into, and it will show me code in the subroutine as I step. When I work with more than one program at a time, Code 400 will automatically take me into that program. So I'm now going to step into a call to sample. The debugger will automatically bring me up into, in this case, a listing view of the program sample. Code 400 supports both source and listing level debug. Listing date level debug gives the advantage of including uh, includes and also DDS fields that have been brought in as part of the compile. But I interact with it exactly the same way I would with source. For example, to add a breakpoint, double click on the line and say go, it'll stop on that breakpoint. All the time that I've been working with the debugger, the, state, the commands that I've executed have been recorded so that I can play them back later, as I show here. These are all of the, the commands that I've executed. At this point in time, I'm going to show you the third component of Code 400, which is DSU. DSU basically replaces SDA and RLU on OS 400. It also works with physical and logical file DDS. In this case, I've already loaded the source for a display file, which has two record formats. I'm now going to select to work with one of those record formats. The advantage of working with Presentation Manager is it allows us to do some uh, neat things as compared to SDA. SDA normally did the syntax and semantic check phases on the S400. Again, as part of offloading the host, we've moved those onto the PS2. So I'm going to pick the first record format to work with. And it will load me into a window which looks almost identical to a 5250 screen, since we are building screens that will run on the 5250. The difference is, because it's using Presentation Manager, it allows me to interact with the fields on that screen in a much more powerful way. I'm just going to maximize this window so that we can see the whole screen. In this particular case, when I select a field, it automatically outlines the extent of the field. Unlike SDA, where you had to 
uh, look at the attributes to figure out how long the field was. When I pick a field, I can now edit characteristics of it. For example, I can change the color to red. I can also work with fields as a group. If I click and drag, I have picked these three fields. I can now work with them as a group, so I can change the attributes to reverse image. Much easier than working on SDA. I can also manipulate fields. If I want to move this field, I can pick it up and move it to where I want it to be positioned. I can also work with fields as a group to move them around. If I want to make a duplicate of fields, I can hold the control key down and drag. I now have two copies of the same fields. To delete fields, edit clear. Unlike SDA, where delete, using the delete key in a screen would cause uh, fields to positions uh, of other fields to be affected, uh, this type of clear automatically removes just the fields. In fact, if you didn't really want to do that, you can undo it. I'm just going to delete these again. Working with fields on the screen, you can do things, for example, changing the size of them by just grabbing the edge of the field and dragging, and that will automatically change the DDS that will be used to generate the final screen. To create fields, position where you'd like to uh, have the field created. Click on Create, and in this case, I'll create a system name field. It will automatically insert it, and if it's not in the right place, I can just drag it and position it to where I want it to be. I can also create uh, help areas much easier. For example, if I want to create a help area that, for these three fields, create help specification. In this case, I'm just going to use DDS record formats for the help. I'm just going to give it a name of record format. DSU will automatically warn me if I'm trying to do something. In this case, it's not contained in the file, but I'm going to say yes, go ahead and create anyway gives me an informational message showing that it's adding the help keyword at the file level. And now the help area is identified on the screen with a, a dotted line. The neat thing about this is if the help area isn't quite right, I can just grab the edge of it again and drag it to make it the correct size. So in creating help areas for the screen, you can very quickly see where the uh, areas are missed or where there's overlap. I can work with multiple record formats at the same time. I'm just going to add the other record format. This is similar to displaying multiple record formats in SDA. The difference is that uh, the record format that is um, currently active is shown in a brighter color. For example, if I activate the, the other record, you'll notice that uh, it's brighter than the other one. This tells me which ones I can actually move. It makes it a lot easier if I want to move a field to position it to the correct place on the screen. I can also work with multiple record formats on different screens. This allows me to cut and paste between them. So I'm just going to remove this one. So I'm back to my original screen. I can go back to the record list and say that I want to actually edit in a separate window. This allows me to do some things such as cutting and pasting between them. I can even cut and paste text from the 5250 screen and paste it right into a work session. So in this case, I'm going to pick these fields, and I'm going to say I want to copy them. And I'm going to copy them back to this screen. And they're, they're pasted in with the attributes that were in the original screen. So as you can see, taking advantage of uh, OS2 and Presentation Manager allows us to do some things that are just not possible with the SDA work screen. There are many other features that I could show you. One in particular that is interesting is the ability to uh, work with the conditioning of fields. In this case, I'm going to pick that field and condition it with an indicator 12. And now with the record format and setting indicators, I can actually set indicators as a group. For example, I'm going to add a group in here that says, whenever the screen is in update mode, indicator 12 and 14 are on. This name condition will be saved with the source when you save it back to the AS400. But in this case, I can also create one called delete. And we'll just turn two different indicators on.
Now you'll notice that whenever I want to see what the screen looks like with that particular conditioning, I can just select it. It makes it much easier to test screen images with indicators on and off. So in summary, three key things that Code 400 is trying to do for the customer. One is to help increase programmer productivity, and we do that by taking advantage of the powerful workstation, OS2, and presentation manager. The second key feature is that of host offload. Much of what I've been doing here has been on the PS2, and I've not been using ES400 resources. Third is that we've done significant things to help the RPG programmer. We recognize that there's a lot of RPG source out there that has to be worked with, and Code 400 has dealt with that in putting many functions which help the RPG programmer. Hello, my name is Patrick Liu. I'm with the IBM Canada Lab in Toronto. I'm going to give you an overview today of a product that we just announced. It's the IBM SAA 80 Cycle Cooperative Development Environment on the AS400. This product was announced in September 3, 1991, and it will be available in June of 1992. By the way, the short name for the product is called 80 Cycle Code 400. 80 Cycle Code 400 is part of the 80 Cycle family of products. Uh, what I have here is the framework of the 80 Cycle uh, strategy that was announced by IBM in September of 1989. In the produce phase, where we can create applications, uh, we have basically two main technology on the AS400. The first one is the uh, high-level programming languages, uh, which is languages like RPG, COBOL, as well, there's the uh, generator technology. 80 Cycle Code 400 is really a critical part of the high-level languages strategy on the AS400. Um, we have announced support for the RPG programming languages in September, and there's also a statement of direction that will support the COBOL 400 languages as well. 80 Cycle Code 400 is really a new application development paradigm on the AS400. It delivers what we call cooperative development environment. And what cooperative development environment means is that we are really exploiting the programmable workstation running on the IBM PS2 using the OS2 operating system. And we are going to deli deliver application development functions on the PS2 workstation, exploiting the graphical capabilities to deliver substantial improvement in usability, as well as using the local processing power of the workstation um, to deliver application development functions. The applications still execute on the AS400 host, so we are still building and um, executing native AS400 applications. The workstations interact cooperatively with the AS400 host at all time and deliver application development functions like an editor, as well as a DDS design capabilities to allow us to design screens and reports and database description files. There's also a, a debugger that runs on the workstation that will interact with the AS400 host to debug applications executing on the AS400 host. And we can invoke the compilers that will be running on the AS400 host as well. Um, these compilers, as I said, uh, for our first release is RPG and there's a statement of direction that the COBOL compiler will also be supported. So this is really a new paradigm in application development on the AS400 to deliver productivity, to deliver host offload, as well as to protect the investments of our RPG applications. This is the key functions that we are delivering on the 80 Cycle Code 400 product. Let's start with the editor. This is a language sensitive editor and we are delivering capabilities like a local syntax checker and a local program verifier. The local syntax checker and program verifier executes locally on the PS2 workstation and will check out the program on the workstation so that by the time we finish ch checking the program, 
We are pretty well guarantee a good, clean compile the very first time we send it down to the AS400 host to compile. Also, there is extensive online help from the editor, help including language reference information so that if the programmer needs to refer to any particular programming language question, he has context-sensitive help to help him answer those questions. There's the DSU capability, which is the DDS design utility. This is really a um, design utility to allow the user to define a screen, a report, or a database description file. Also, we can invoke the AS400 host compiler, the RPG compiler, and be able to feedback the status of the compile and any error messages back to the users on the workstation. Note that the compile actually occurs on the AS400 host. We also have an interactive debugger running on the PS2 workstation cooperatively with the AS400 host to deliver interactive source level debug. This is a dynamic debugger and that the user can introduce breakpoints at any time during the execution of the program. And throughout the execution of the program, the user can look at the, vali the values of variables and find out and make changes to those values as necessary. Also, he is looking at a source view of the program so that he can actually see the execution of the program animated in front of him on the source listing. Or he also has the option to look at the compiler listing view of the program, and that means he can actually see the uh, cross-reference table from the compile listing, all the expanded macros and include libraries and so forth. So it's a very dynamic and really a substantial improvement in the whole debug paradigm for the AS400 application developer. In summary then, let me tell you what the key benefits are that we can get from this uh, application cooperative application development environment. The key benefit really we're looking for is substantial improvement in programmer productivity. The reduction of the edit compile cycle time using local syntax checking and local program verifying of the language sensitive editor. As well, the uh, graphical user interface ease of use, uh, especially exploited in the debugger as well as in the DSU capability to allow the user to design screens and reports. We have state-of-the-art functions in the debugger as well as in the uh, sens language sensitive editor, as well as easy access to online help. There's very extensive help in the product. There's also a very comprehensive language reference help so that the, all the reference information that the user requires for the language is also implemented online in a context sensitive manner so that the user can refer to any particular program programming language questions and be able to address that immediately from the help facility. Uh, we have host offload capability to minimize the number of host compiles because we are now using the local syntax checker and program verifier to catch those errors locally on the workstation and be able to correct them very quickly on the workstation without ever going to the compile phase. And of course, we're really protecting the investment of our programmers for RPG programming language in that this new development environment is entirely compatible with the existing uh, RPG source. All these new tools that we have works very well with the existing RPG programs as well as the DDS objects like the screens and the reports that have been defined now to help our customer maintain their existing applications and reduce the application backlog.